There we go. Hey, Abigail. Palm Sunday always begins with the sacred lighting of the candles, particularly when I can't find my glasses. So thank you so much, Larry, for doing that. That is not a part of the Palm Sunday liturgy. I just couldn't find my glasses. That's why I was late. See, I could have kept that secret, and you would have never known. We greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, on this Palm Sunday. It's so good to have you with us, and we recognize some folks that we haven't had in worship with us in a while. It's good to have you here. Some announcements. This is a busy week, Holy Week. We have services on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Each service will be at 6.30, and each service will be broadcast not only uh, on our Facebook page, or Facebook Live, but will also be recorded and available on our website. Also remember that if you are interested in putting an Easter lily in the church, tomorrow is your deadline to do that. When you're leaving worship today, those of you who are here, 
You can pick up an Easter lily form uh, down in the commons, or you can call Gail tomorrow during the regular church office hours, and she will take your order and get things fixed up for you. Also, I would like to remind you that um, we have some preschool needs. Those are listed in the bulletin. Um, registration for the 2020-2021 school year are available in the church office. Current supply need list is latex gloves and bleach. And I believe that is all the information right now that we have. Does everybody have a palm? We uh, normally, of course, this is the second year, and hopefully this will be the last year we have to do this. We normally gather outside in the narthex and process in, but it's hard to social distance with, uh, uh, with palms and gathering together. So we'll begin our service here. Let us stand together. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mercifully assist us, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life everlasting. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are to raise our palms at this point in the service for the blessing. We begin with the appointed Palm Sunday Gospel for this year, which is written in the 11th chapter of St. Mark's Gospel. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. And then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David, Hosanna in the highest heaven. And then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple, and when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and thank you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was acclaimed Son of David and King of Kings by those who scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path. We ask that you would bless these branches and those who bear them. And grant that we may ever hail him as our Lord and King and follow him with perfect confidence through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace in the name of the Lord. Our gathering song is Victory Chant.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. look forward to hearing our children's sermon now from Liz. First, uh, I gotta get my palm branch. I feel like, you know, Pastor John, it's not the same if we don't lose 12 things, you know, early in the morning. Um, palm Sunday, friends, is like one of my favorite days. It really is. Um, hi, good morning. Um, I just want to say, um, you know, Patrick said it really well this morning. He said, uh, actually, you have a, a eight-year-old, a thirteen-year-old, and a fifteen-year-old totally running the show. I mean, it's going to be great. They're doing a fabulous job. So thank you for that, uh, friends. Who do you think we're going to talk about this morning? Jesus. Jesus, Charlie. You are right. We are talking about Jesus this morning. So. Like I said, Palm Sunday is one of my favorites because I feel like, one, you can hide behind the palm, or you can tickle somebody with the palm. I mean, I feel like six feet distance. I'm, I'm tickling you all with the palm. Today, Pastor John read to us from the Gospel of St. Mark, 
And it's really all about Jesus going into Jerusalem on a donkey. And th everyone are throwing palms, they're waving palms. It's like a parade. Who loves a parade? Oh, yes, of course. Oh, look, Joshua loves a parade. Anna loves a parade. I feel like these are our parade people. But today, as Pastor John read to us, it's all about Jesus going into Jerusalem. However, Jesus has not only been preparing his disciples for what he knows is coming, I feel like that because we are Jesus' friends, we are also his disciples. And so really, what this time of Lent has helped us with is to know that we are also those disciples. And so God is also preparing us through the death and resurrection of Jesus. When Pastor John gets up to preach this morning, he is going to tell you all about how you can help people. You can help people in very small ways. But even the small ways help in a great way. So, for example, we collect food here for, um, for CCM. We help with Samaritan's Table. Just a little kindness and help goes a really long way. And that is what Jesus is getting us ready for. Jesus heads to Jerusalem because he knows what's coming. We listen and we hear because Jesus is dying for who? For everybody. Everybody in the world. So that's what we can remember this week. And what we can take into Holy Week is to remember if we are Jesus' friends, we are also his disciples. And so with that, let us pray. The Lord be with you. Dear God and gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks today for your son, Jesus. Lord, as Jesus walks through the streets of Jerusalem being praised and loved, we do know what's coming. God, you prepare us through your son, Jesus, and you help us to be Jesus in this world. Lord, we ask you to be with this church, this congregation, and especially this community. In your name, in Jesus' name we pray. Can Miss Liz get it? Amen. Amen. All right. Look, I feel like I'm so glad that they haven't forgotten that we are disciples of Jesus. So this service of worship is different every year, Palm Sunday. We begin in different ways and Certainly, as we said, we couldn't begin in the usual way that we like to, but we have started in a different way. The gospel reading at the very beginning, the traditional reading of Palm Sunday, Jesus coming into the city of Jerusalem. In many ways, this is the day we have been waiting for. Uh, this has been probably the longest 40-day Lenten period of my life. Uh, it seems like it's been about 80 days that we've been doing Lent this year. But after nearly 40 days now of Lenten preparation, today Jesus is making his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. You remember, as we have been following Mark's gospel, that Jesus' ministry begins way out in the country, right? Way over in Stanley and Montgomery counties, you know, out there in the country. And then slowly but surely, he's moving towards Charlotte. He's moving towards the big city, faithfully toward the holy city, of Jerusalem. And so today, what does St. Mark say that Jesus does in order to enter the capital city? What does he do in order to parade into the metropolis, to occupy the throne that was so rightfully his? Mark says that Jesus gets everything started by having two of his disciples go and get a donkey. That's it. That's the first thing to be done. And if you were listening as we read the gospel, you notice that Mark spends half of that gospel reading talking about getting a donkey. The great 
Presbyterian preacher Tom Long says that Mark never tells us which two of the disciples were chosen to go get the donkey. But he says, don't you wish, don't you hope that it was James and John who were chosen for the donkey detail? You know, the ones who just hours earlier had asked Jesus, grant us to sit, Lord, one at your right hand and one at your left in all of your glory. Wouldn't it be poetic just if, if Jesus had said to James and John, who were known as the sons of thunder, hey, you two, go rent me something at Donkey Max. Nothing too fancy, something low mileage, maybe just ridden on Sundays, plenty comfortable because I got some kind of week ahead of me. What glory it is to be a disciple. Here Jesus is about to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the principalities and powers of darkness. He's about to be lifted up on the cross. He will draw all of humanity to himself. He is about to triumph over sin, death, and the devil. And he asks the disciples, do you know where I can get something to ride in on? This is certainly not one of those inspiring stories about how noble it is to be a disciple of Jesus. Not that we should be too surprised by this, because if you've been following Mark's gospel, you know the disciples don't come off looking so great. They are always misunderstanding. The disciples are always befuddled, and yes, they are sometimes downright stupid. And so here, the beginning of Holy Week, with all of the big stuff about to happen, Jesus trusts the disciples with the monumental task of finding a donkey. Although, if it were not for their obedience in this mundane task, Jesus never would have ridden into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, would he? No hosannas would have been sung, no palm branches waved, things would have been very different. And so today Mark thinks it's important that you and I remember that these disciples did what they were told to do. They found a donkey at the last minute and the Son of God himself was welcomed into Jerusalem. I would say, as Liz indicated in the children's sermon, that you and I are a lot like those early disciples, aren't we? I don't know about you, but I have discovered in 35 years of being a pastor and 60 plus years of being a Christian that I don't get it right all the time. In fact, many times I get it wrong. You and I are not always first and center when it comes to faithfulness and fidelity. We don't often make headlines. Most of us, in what we do as disciples, are called to more prosaic, mundane tasks. I see what you do. I know what you do in this community and in this church. You are the ones who Take the chocolate pie over when you hear that someone has died. You are the one who squeezes the hand of the person sitting beside you in church and quietly says, I'm praying for you. You are the ones who bring cans of string beans for the CCM food drive. You drop your check in the mail to the church. You change the pyramids to make sure that they are the right color, even during those days when there were only seven of us here. And most of us were so lost in the pandemic, we couldn't even tell you what month it was, much less what the proper liturgical color for the Sunday was. You knew what it was, and you made sure it was right. You bring the Easter eggs stuffed with candy, you will make it back to choir practice every Wednesday once we start back. You do your Sunday school lesson the best you know how to do. 
You volunteer to serve on councils and committees. You write notes to shut-ins and folks who have birthdays. You volunteer at Samaritan's Table. You work with Carver Elementary. You give a pint of blood as you're able. That's what you do. And this, of course, is not even to mention all the things you do that I don't know about. The things you do for your family, the things you do for your neighbors, the things you do for your friends. You are doing all of the small things that are a part of the kingdom of God. You are preparing the way for Jesus. You're doing the things that must be done before Jesus can make his entry into the world. You're a lot like John the Baptist. You're getting things ready for the coming of the Messiah. How important is that? When I was in seminary, I preached one Sunday in Saluda, South Carolina. I know a lot of us have been to Saluda, North Carolina. Let me tell you, Saluda, South Carolina is really off the beaten path. You have to hunt to find Saluda, South Carolina, particularly if you've left seminary that morning and you're trying to get there by 8.30. When I got there that morning, I found a beautiful little church in a beautiful little town. It was a delight to be there and to preach there. This is a good congregation to preach to. You all make good eye contact, and when you don't have your masks on, I can actually see you smile sometimes when I make a joke. That was a good congregation to preach to as well. That little congregation, and remember, I wasn't as adept at preaching as I am now. That congregation hung on to every word I said. You could tell they were interested and engaged with what I had to tell them. And after the service that Sunday, before I was taken to lunch, I remarked to a small group of parishioners, what a great church. This is just a fun place to preach. And one of the older women who was standing there said to me, you know, my grandfather made that pulpit in his workshop. She said, I was just a little girl, but I remember when he made it. One spring, he went out and gathered walnut boards, carefully planed it and rubbed it, made it smooth with his own hands. And I realized that the effectiveness of our preaching in that place, whatever sermons were heard, whatever sermons were lived out in that little congregation, they rested on the quiet almost forgotten efforts of a man, long since dead, who had worked late into the night, labored lovingly after he had finished a long days of work, day of work, down in his basement, finishing up a pulpit that had borne the weight of many preachers over the years. That's sort of a parable about the way God works in this church, isn't it? You are the ones who build in so many ways and have built in this place in so many ways. You are the ones who build the foundation of this church. You are the ones who make it possible for God to do his work in this place. Think of all the people who have been touched because of the ministry of this church, because of your ministry, not just here in Kannapolis or Cabarrus County, but all over the Senate, all over the nation, all over the world. In this holiest of weeks, let me say to you, thank you for being such faithful disciples, for the difference you've made, and for the difference you will continue to make 
to the glory of God. Amen. On Palm Sunday and for the seven weeks that follow of Easter, we affirm our faith by use of the Nicene Creed. And so with the people of God in Christ now and in every time, let us stand as we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we are preparing for prayer, let me update you on our hospital report. Uh, Betty Chloe Longacre was having a very good week this past week. She remains at the Hospice House of Salisbury. Donna Lambert, I spoke with Jerry yesterday. She has had a good weekend and will begin a second, another round of intense chemotherapy on Monday. Jerry asks for your prayers. And Jenny Jones, after having surgery at Atrium Concord, has been dismissed and is recuperating at home. Tom Kilby has asked me to tell you on behalf of himself and his family how much he and the family appreciate your expressions of kindness and love and sympathy and support during this past week. Uh, he wants you to know how much it is appreciated by the family. And so now, as you are seated, relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. You may kneel or be seated for these prayers. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. We pray that you would continue to give your church service as our primary goal. Redeem us from ever believing we are too good or too proud to do what needs to be done. And help us to never forget that we rely on you for our strength and our courage. Heal us and empower us to confess Jesus Christ, crucified and risen. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world. In all nations, we ask that you would instruct the powerful, that they would not exploit their power, but they would maintain peace and justice. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would sustain all members of the military wherever they might be and that you would guide those who command them, that they would serve those in greatest need. We pray for our nation's leaders, for our President Joseph 
and for our Governor Roy, and for all in our land who make and administer and judge our laws. Give to them a spirit of humility and a spirit of trust. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel lost and forsaken. Abide with those who are in prison. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those of all ages who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer the pain of sickness and the pain of grief. Especially this day, we pray for Becky Brantley and for Mabel Brown, for Tom Brown, for Florence Calandra, for all of the victims of the coronavirus, including those who are hospitalized now, for Norris Dearman and for Mary Dorton, we pray for Fran Garver, for Bobby and Julie Hagee. We ask that you would be with Shirley Helms and with Judy and Bob Hill. We ask that you would continue to keep Jenny Jones safe as she recovers and recuperates. We pray that you would be with the family of Sylvia Kil Kilby as they continue to mourn her passing. Give your strength to Donna and Jerry Lambert, to Hoy Lanning, to Betty Clo Longacre. We ask that you would be with Robert Lovin and Dave McRunnell, with Gary and Joyce Mallerney and with Doris McCarn, for Vicki McCombs, for Louise Probst, for Marty Payne, for Jim and Suzanne Reed and for Anna Richter, for John and Betty Shaver, for Ruth Trollinger, for all in our families and all in our circle of friends who have experienced sudden and unpredictable illness and sudden and unpredictable death. And now, Heavenly Father, we ask that you would be with those in our circle of friends who we name before you now in the silence of our hearts or aloud before you. For all who need it, grant respite and renewal. And we pray this day for the families who take such loving care of those they love. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You called followers to tend Jesus' body in death, sustain hospice workers and funeral directors, Bless this congregation's ministries at times of death, those who plan and lead funerals, those who have prepared meals, and all who offer support in grief. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all of our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us stand together. Following his resurrection, the Lord Jesus breathed peace upon his disciples. We share in this peace of Christ in the church today. And so we say, the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. You may share the peace of Christ with those around you. For those of you watching at home, uh, this is the time when you would prepare your communion elements. For those of us here in the church, this is the time when you loosen your cellophane to reveal your wafer and your grape juice as we prepare ourselves for Holy Communion. And you may be seated. In the night in which he was betrayed, 
our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered as one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray now as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may now receive these elements as these words are said for you. This is the body of Christ, which is given for you. And this is the blood of Christ, which is shed for you. Let us stand as we receive this post-communion blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Now in this coming week, remember that you are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, 
freed to serve your neighbor. May God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Our sending hymn is Draw Me Close. Nothing else could take your place.